All right, with Christmas and New Year's over, it's finally time to get some work put in on this thing. I went through the unboxing fairly quickly, and I didn't get a real good look at this body. It's a little bit rougher than I thought it was. It's not as bad as most of them. It just got some really high flash in some areas. And as I mentioned in the unboxing, these panel lines, they just... It's like they don't even exist. There's a faintest sink mark up in here too that I'm trying to get the light just right so you can see it. But uh, not much luck. So let's move on to deepening these panel lines. And it's pretty straightforward. I don't have a fancy engraver so I'm just going to use the back of my X-Acto blade just to carve them lines a little bit deeper. only advice I could really offer is just to go slow at the start and only once you got the panel deep enough you know you're not going to slip out then you could really start applying some pressure. And I do apologize if I sound more echoey than normal. I dropped my phone down the stairs because I'm a clumsy idiot. My mic just hasn't been the same ever since. Now if the panel lines are good and deep, I can move on to start knocking down these mold lines. The peak of the fenders here, they were kind of high, so I was aggressive with them at first just to get it knocked down most of the way. Now once I got that knocked down most of the way, I'm going to switch over to some fine grit sandpaper and sand it the rest of the way down from there. Just be mindful when you're doing this, there still needs to be an arch, so to speak, just not any raised areas. So don't round it off. Now the rest of the mold lines were fairly mellow, so I just use that finer grit sandpaper to knock it all down from here. Once you get to the point where your thumbnail will not catch on it, then you're good to go. And for these openings, it's easier just to scrape it out than it is to try to sand it down. There's one thing I've always hated about these kits, and that is these molded in side markers. So I'm going to use a super sharp X-Acto to make myself a pilot hole, and I am going to drill them out, because we're going to try something here. I was going through my stash to see how much carbon fiber I had left, and I found these. I have no idea what these are from, but these are going to be our side markers. Now with those holes drilled out, we could move on to our next headache. We're going to move on to test fitting this hood. So make sure you got these sprue standoffs cut and everything sanded down smooth because it needs to be a perfect fit. Now let's see if the rumors are true. Yeah, <laughs> this hood does not fit. From what I read and saw in other videos, this is normal fitment for this hood. So let's get to work. Since it is showing to be high in opposing corners, I'm just going to essentially bend this thing in half corner to corner. And I do try to avoid heat whenever I can, so I'm just going to go a little bit at a time, slow and steady. And it seems like we are indeed making some progress here. Now 
So I'm just going to keep bending, and after about 10-15 minutes of messing with it, I'm going to have something that looks like this. Now if we look at this from the front, you could see the right side is much, much lower. I kind of end up having to roll the front of the hood down lower to get it to set right. So yeah guys, if any of you plan on building this thing, be prepared to spend some time making this hood fit right. I had completely overlooked this the entire time I was making this hood fit, but uh, let's get this hinge in place to see if it still fits. It is essentially just a cross brace and it is flat so I hope it doesn't tweak the hood and undo all that hard work I just did. Cool, it still fits. Now another thing that gave some people some fits was these buttresses is, is on the back of the car. I had no problem other than just being a little bit loose and I'm hoping once I get some paint and some clear on it it'll tighten those right up. But these fit and they fit well. Maybe I'm just lucky. I don't know. Now with all the body work out of the way we can move on to get some paint on this thing. I bought this pink surfacer from Splash Paints because apparently pink is a good base coat for red, so I'm going to give it a try. Now a little bit of forewarning. This whole time I thought the surfacer and primer were the same things. That is not the case. I have a little bit of a problem later on. You'll see. Being a Splash Paints product, this laid out extremely well. I have no complaints, no problems. My only kind of... Well, I guess it's a complaint. It just doesn't cover that well. It took about six coats to get to where I'm at here. Of course, that could just be me not being used to the new airbrush. This new airbrush, it's got a 0.3 millimeter needle in it. My old one, it had like a... A five millimeter needle just because it was so worn out. The sad thing is, that's not much of an exaggeration. The needle, I could slide it almost all the way through the nozzle. It, it was pretty bad. So let's go in here real close and take a look at this stuff. From my understanding, this surfacer, it's got kind of a micro filler in it to help with just fine scratches to fill it in and smooth everything out. Now the areas where I'd sanded down the mold lines, it doesn't look like I even sanded them. So I guess this stuff does what it's supposed to do. There's also something I do want to try here. I've heard the term pre-shading a few times. So I'm going to do the panel line accent now, then apply my paint over it. Hopefully that'll lighten it up a little bit so it's not so black and dramatic and it looks a little bit more realistic. And with the panel line juice good and dry, we can finally move on to doing our base coat. And you guys know me, I paint literally every one of my Ferraris the same color. And that of course is Splash Paints Rosso Corsa. The process is always the same. Start from the bottom, work our way up, so we do the fender wells first, the body lines, the holes and the bumper, all the openings, anything that you could overlook and easily forget. Start there. As you guys saw, for the first coat, I always do a side to side motion. Then for the next coat here, I'm going to do an up and down motion. Then I just keep alternating until I get the coverage I'm happy with. Now 
I will tell you guys that pink surfacer it actually did its job I could have got this done in just two coats but I played it safe and done it in three it tremendously helps this red layout after that had a few hours to dry I masked off the body and I started working on the paint for the black top I'm keeping the same theme going here if you guys remember a few videos ago I got some black surfacer I'm laying a few coats of that down first, then I'm going to go over it with some Tamiya X1, just pure gloss black. And while I'm here, I'm also painting the mirrors and those buttresses because they're also all going to be in gloss black. Now that that's had a few hours to dry, we can move on to our base coat. I mentioned earlier, but I'm using Tamiya X1. With all the painting done, we can move on to one of my favorite parts, and that's peeling off some masking tape. Now, I had a little bit of a bleed through right there. It's a bummer, I know, but it's perfectly okay. I lucked out. That's going to be a spot that's covered by a window and the buttresses, so I don't even need to worry about that. Now, with the paint having a few hours to dry, I can move on to the decals. Now you may notice what we're doing here does not at all look anything like the thumbnails. Yeah, um, I, I had a change of heart after something happened. Once I get that thing exactly centered where it needs to be, I'm just going to spin around here. I'm going to hit it with the blow dryer, apply some heat, and get it kind of burned in. Oh, hey, my, my voice kind of sounds like me again. Man, I don't know what's going on with this phone. Now once I got most of the water evaporated from the blow dryer, I'm just going to squeegee the rest of it out from underneath the decals with a Q-tip. And yeah, there's a little bitty crack right there. Yeah, these things happen. So with the one decal down, I'm just going to move on. I'm going to do the roof and the trunk line next. I was right about here, I could just sit back and looked at this gray stripe and just, I, 
I hate this. I don't like this at all. I was really hoping it looked a lot more like this box art right here, where it's just a very, very dark gray, almost black. I knew it was gray just from looking at them, but I really thought that it would darken up for some reason. It looks something like this. This is what I was originally going for. So change of plans. I'm going to move away from the matte colors, and I'm going to do it all as a gloss. So I got to just masking up around the decal, and I'm just going to paint directly over it with some black. Remember earlier when I was talking about how this surfacer is not a primer and something bad happens? Yeah, right here. That pulled up straight down to the bare plastic. Luckily the roof and the rear trunk, I had zero problems. That just really speaks volumes of the quality of splash paints here. This technically doesn't even have a primer on it, and it is still sticking to the plastic. Mostly. So here we go, round two. I'm going to mask it up and paint it all over again. Fingers crossed. Here we go. Oh, hey, cool. It worked. So now I'm just going to apply some of the badging decals. I do have photo wedge that I'm going to try to apply here. But I'm just going to use these just to help me position and lay them out. Because once I get glue on a photo etch, I'm only going to get one chance to stab it exactly where it needs to be. So I'm just going to spend all the time now to get the decal lined up. Then I will just glue the photo etch directly over the decal. Now with those additional decals done and the stripes dry, we can move on to clear. And it's going to be just like our base coat. You start with the easy to forget spots, then just work your way out from there. Since I do have decals on this, I'm going to do a light layer first just to kind of prime the decals. The 2K urethane clear that I use, it is super chemically hot. So if you go heavy right off the bat, it will melt decals. So I'm going to cut out a lot of the boring bits here because, well, painting is boring. Watching it is even more boring. So this is, here we are, this is our third coat. I let each coat dry about 15 to 20 minutes before the next layer. you also see I got some masking tape in the engine bay. There is like an engine cover of sorts molded in. And I'm going to have to paint it a different color later, so I don't want to have to deal with painting over a bunch of clear. So a few days ago I released a video of me building a new display shelf for the models. I really, really need to build a better spray booth. Would anybody be interested in a, another kind of how-to of me pretending to be a woodworker? Let me know, and I think I can make that happen. Here we are, fresh out the spray booth. I'm going to peel off that masking tape layer now because I do not want the clear to dry and essentially glue it in place. But yeah, all that, that gets painted and decaled later. 
That is it though guys. Thank you so much for watching if you made it this far. It truly means a lot to me.